Hello, Colors. Welcome back to Viva Barca, the home of everything Barcelona, where we are going to be discussing on some fresh updates. We are going to start with Robert Lewandowski, as it has been reported that Barcelona don't want trouble in the striker pursuit and will not push for the Bayern legend anymore. This is according to reports from Spanish outlet Sport. We are going to be looking at that as we progress. Secondly, talking about Luke de Jong, who have reportedly returned to training. Of course, he had COVID-19 last week and now he's negative. So he has returned and he's likely to be on that squad list against Levante tomorrow Sunday. We are going to be discussing much on that as well. Then thirdly, talking about Cesar Aspilicueta, Barcelona's pursuit for Aspilicueta is lost. This is according to report from Sport. We are going to be discussing much on that as we move ahead. So guys, as we get right into it, please endeavor to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, give the video a like and make sure to watch the video right up to the very end. Barca, Barca, Barca. In recent weeks, Robert Lewandowski has emerged as the main attacking target for FC Barcelona, who are unlikely to shell out millions to sign either Mohamed Salah or Erling Haaland. You know why the Bayern Munich forward, you know, could cost a fortune as well. He has emerged as the desired option due to his age profile and the contract that expires at the end of next season. Barcelona and PSG are, in fact, two of the most likely destinations for the poor. If he ends up leaving Bayern Munich in this summer as per sport, there have been reports of Lewandowski's desire to play for Barca as well with the Catalans reportedly closing in on his capture. However, ESPN journalist Moises Loren has refuted such claims, delivering a rather ominous update you know, on Barcelona's pursuit of the star striker. It appears Barcelona don't want to get into trouble with FC Bayern by trying to coax Lewandowski into a move to the Camp Nou, despite the club's evident interest in the player. Barcelona may also have to, you know, make significant alterations to their frugal wage structure if they are to pursue the Polish international, who is likely to hold out for a lucrative contract, one on par with Mohamed Salah and even Erling Haaland. Hence, there is a possibility that Barca may not sign a new striker at all. Barcelona appear to be rather happy with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who has enjoyed early success following his move to the Camp Nou from Arsenal, scoring nine goals in all competitions so far. The club are also banking on the services of young phenom Ansu Fati. The explosive winger had recently returned to training after yet another injury layoff and is reportedly looking stronger than ever. Fati is yet to future since his return from injury, but we can soon expect him back in action as Barca gear up for a difficult final phase of the campaign. So talking about this Lewandowski transfer saga, I think it's it's really difficult. Honestly speaking, with this report from Sport talking about how it might be so impossible right now for Lewandowski to come to Barcelona, I think it's obvious. It's not even surprising because from day one, when we consider the financial state that Barca are currently in, you ask yourself, Will Barca be able to fund this transfer? Will Barca be able to pay this guy? Of course, Lewandowski is no small player. Lewandowski demands a lot. And you can score. Maybe we have other things that we have to focus. We have to strengthen other areas of the pitch. So you going to Lewandowski, it means, okay, maybe all the funds that have been gathered for transfer business is likely to be focused on that superstar. Honestly, I think if Barca can, you know, focus on the forwards that we have, we have been talking about Aubameyang having some good... Good time so far with Barca. You know, Ansu Fati have returned from injury. He's still training, but he's not really match fit for now. But I think next season, there will be no great deal when it comes to the forwards. You know, except if if Usman Dembele leave, as many expect him to leave Barcelona, then Barca go for Rafinha, then I think we are good to go. It's not a, it's not a must that we go for a, a superstar striker. All this is not a necessity at this point. Honestly, at some point, it, it surprises me how... Barca will push so hard, so, so hard. I mean, uh, to the extent of prioritizing that superstar signing to the other areas of the page, I think it's not uh, the greatest of ideas. I think Barca can still do good with the players that we currently have under the tutelage of manager Xavi Hernandez. So enough of that. Moving on to the next story of discussion, the depth 
of the squad is often as important as the quality of players on the pitch for elite clubs like Barca, the hectic schedule demands player rotations and that is possible only if the manager has options at his disposal. The recent injuries of Gerard Piquet and Sofati Sejno Des and Memphis Opai have brought to the fore the importance of having um, backups. Last time out, Barcelona played Ronald Arago at right back owing to a lack of options and were thus forced to bring on Clement Langlade when Piquet was sent off against Frankfurt in that Europa League, you know, with injury. One other position where the club have few options is at centre forward. Apart from Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, Luke de Jong is the only player who has Javis fate to play as a striker. However, the Dutch international has was unavailable in the last game after he tested positive for COVID. According to a report from Tony Juan Marti, the young has tested negative today and has resumed training with the group. This comes as a big relief for Xavi, who must field a rejuvenated um, 11 in less than 24 hours. Moreover, Aubameyang's poor form after the international break could prompt the manager to look for other options. The Gabonese striker failed to register a single shot on target against Frankfurt in the Europa League and failed to create any threat in the Frankfurt box. Given his deep in form, Luke de Jong could well start against Levante on Sunday. In 15 La Liga games this season, the former Sevilla striker has scored 5 goals and missed 4 big chances. So with matches coming hard and fast for Barca, you know, Xavi needs to think a lot about rotations, um, which he has been doing very great so far, I must admit. So with Luke de Jong coming from a COVID, now he's negative, you know, for COVID, I think he can still help, Xavi can still rotate sometimes, but of course, even though Luke De Jong have not been in great shape, or let me say have not been in great form, maybe because Javi have not been playing him as often in the game. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see how Javi you know starts his lineup in that game against Levante tomorrow in La Liga. Then on to the final story of discussion. The back and forth of transfer city season never seems to get old. The reporting on the Caesar Aspel Equator and Chelsea situation has never been murkier and more confusing. Since the defender's contract ends this summer, there, there were some thoughts around the footballing world that a move to Barcelona would be on the table for Aspi Lequeta. Barca need to bolster the full-back position and a veteran like Aspi Lequeta, you know, could be an affordable option. However, according to the latest reporting from Sport, the claim is that the Barcelona, they believe that Aspi Lequeta's situation is all but lost and the Spaniard coming to the Camp Nou is a no-go. So things have been more complicated with news. Chelsea have triggered the clause in the contract, which will extend Aspel Equator's contract for another year, forcing Barca to pay a fee if they wish to carry on. So all of which means Aspel Equator moving to Barcelona is probably, very probably not going to happen after all. Big blow for Barcelona. They might as well look for other alternative for the right back. We've been talking a lot about other alternative who can play as right back. Nusem Azrai that was really linked to play that right back for Barcelona has also been lost. So Barca have, I don't know if they have some, some bad luck when it comes to those right back targets. You know, Mazrai will be a buy-in player. Of course, now we're talking about Aspel Equator, who is very unlikely to to come to the Camp Nou in the summer. So Barca needs to keep their options open. So colors, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you did enjoy the video and also hope you did subscribe. If you haven't, please endeavor to do so. So you always stay in touch with the latest on FC Barcelona. Yeah, on Viva Barca. On the next time. Bye-bye.